Okay, if you take home just one word from this talk, <coughs> remember Monsanto. <laughs> Every time you hear the term invasive species, think Monsanto. <laughs> Okay, to be a science, uh, a field must be objective, verifiable, repeatable, and predictive. Objective definition of terms is essential in science. And invasion <laughs> biology stands or falls on uh, the definition of na the concept of native. Now, no biologist can identify what species is native to an area without prior knowledge. There are no measurable criteria no observable characteristics that can distinguish native from non-native. Uh, native and non-native are illusions. Bison, bear, and deer are immigrants from Eurasia. Mammoths were present here until only 7,500 years ago. Uh, ginkgo fossils are found in Oregon. Tree of Heaven uh, was here in the tertiary. And now that it's come home, it's being killed as an invader. Uh, change and movement are natural. Forests ebb and flow across the landscape, and they continually change in content from oaks to conifers to beech to birch and so on. The jaguar formerly ranged north to the edge of the Arctic tundra in North America. Lions lived in an ice-free desert in northern Alaska during the last ice age and were present throughout North America. Horses, the horse family evolved here in North America, radiated to other continents, became extinct here, it came home, and now it's being killed as an invader. Harm is another concept that is redefined at will in invasion biology. That's how you can tell invasion biology is a pseudoscience. No matter what the species, no matter what the effects, they are called harmful. If an invader has fruits, then it's using the birds to spread, or it's competing with native fruit bearers for dispersal. If it has no fruits, then it's harmful because it's useless to wildlife. <laughs> An African American once said, if I stand, I am loitering, if I walk, I am prowling. If I run, I am fleeing. Same mentality in invasion biology. Uh, it's also based on these discredited ecological concepts like the balance of nature. Uh, natural biota are not co-evolved balanced systems, but are accustomed to uh, accepting and integrating new species. If you look at uh, paleontology, you'll see that's true. Oh, and in fact, in all cases throughout the world, including the oceanic islands, invasion has increased biological diversity at all levels. Invasion is also entirely natural. Uh, note this dense invading monoculture. This is the native bracken fern. There is no scientific model that can distinguish this from an alien invasion. So <coughs> cause or symptom. Uh, these are the true causes of invasions. Invaders are disturbance indicators. They're symptoms of abuse of the land or pollution or changes like that. So, okay, a reality check. Purple loose strife, poster weed of invasion hysteria. It's said to form monotypic stands destroying water waterfowl habitat. This is untrue. A study of 258 plots found higher bird densities in loose strife. Another study found no significant difference in plant species richness regardless of the density of loose strife. There is no scientific justification for loose strife control. Salt cedar, it's called an ecological disaster, one of the nation's worst weeds, said to crowd out natives and destroy river ecosystems. Yet plant diversity is actually greater in salt cedar stands than in native cottonwood and bird and insect species richness and density is equal to native vegetation. In fact, 90% of the endangered willow flycatcher nest in salt cedar. There is no evidence that it harms river ecosystems. 
Uh, eucalyptus, it's said to invade and destroy ecosystems, killing plants and birds. Uh, note the dense native shrubs at the base of this eucalyptus. Uh, studies found 47 species of native birds using the tree in California, and the understory includes 36 plant species. Uh, these photographs were taken at the base of a eucalyptus trunk. Compare this to the complete suppression of understory by this invader, the California redwood, which invaded California from the north during the tertiary. Uh, monarch stands are the preferred sites for, uh, uh, eucalyptus stands are the preferred sites for overwintering monarch uh, congregations, and this clear cut is what the nativists are doing to our groves in California. Uh, yellow star thistle, it's said to be of no use to wildlife, uh, this bumblebee doesn't agree, this uh, the camouflaged hunting spider, a uh, skipper, a butterfly, uh, these are a couple of species of wild bees. Okay, note the sharp ecotone at the barbed wire fence in the 1999 photograph. Dense star thistle on this side. Barbed wire cannot stop thistle seed. This proves that the thistle is a symptom of past land use. Note that 10 years later, the star thistle has receded, native shrubs have increased. This is entirely without any management at all. Uh, hydrilla, it's called uh, Florida's most aggressive alien plant species, yet it supports the highest bird species diversity in Florida and the highest fish density and biomass with six times the density and five times the biomass as the native Potamogeton. There, there's other causes of invasion. Invasion is claimed that invasive species caused Australian mammal extinctions, yet these occurred only after the genocidal displacement of the aboriginal peoples and the consequent loss of their traditional land management practices. In the southwest, uh, bird diversity dropped after Indian farmers were forced from the land to create protected parks. Amazonian Indians increase rainforest species diversity and traditional Swiss grazing practices increase alpine meadow biodiversity. In Africa, traditional peoples have maintained the greatest, the planet's greatest remaining megafauna. We, we, we can be good citizens of the planet. We can live on this planet and is, everything we do is not harmful. Uh, invaders are commonly beneficial. The zebra mussel cleared polluted water in Lake Erie and inc increased the catch of native yellow perch fivefold in abandoned Amazonian grazing land. An invasive solanum aids the regeneration of native forest. Fire ants destroy agricultural pests, improve soils, and do not harm native ants and birds. Gorse protects endangered species in New Zealand and speeds native forest regeneration. These, all of these beneficial effects are carefully ignored by invasionists who are promoting a crisis. Invasionists are increasingly extremist. Native plants are killed just miles outside their historic range. National park policy states that if mountain goats spread into Yellowstone from introduced, southern po introduced northern populations, they'll be killed as invaders. But if the same species spreads into the park from the west, they'll be welcomed because they are from natural populations. Uh, even in endangered species are exterminated where they have naturalized outside their ranges. The Monterey Cypress. Uh, the two small stippled areas, number four and down there, those are the world's only original stands of Monterey Cypress. Uh, just a few hundred, <coughs> few hundred acres. Yet this endangered species is destroyed as an invader in South Africa, New Zealand, and even in California, just 50 miles from these stands. These invading populations are in fact the best case scenario of endangered species conservation, the establishment of self-sustaining wild populations in safe new habits, and should be protected, not destroyed. Australian invasionists have created a genetically engineered plague that sterilizes rabbits and a 100% fatal mousepox. 
After they published their methods, they realized that their, their very methods could be used to create a doomsday <coughs> plague from human smallpox. So invasion biology is going to the very ends of mass death. So now we come to the big scary N word that uh, Sid touched on. Invasion biology originated as an organized movement in Nazi Germany and it is currently being used by the racist national vanguard to justify their spurious views. This is Adolf Hitler shaking hands with Alvin Seifert, the man who was charged with cleansing the German Reich of non-native plants. Forty years ago, the threats to nature were pollution, pesticides, poisons, bulldozers, and chainsaws. Now we are told that the greatest threats to nature are wild plants and animals, and the cure, poisons, bulldozers, and chainsaws. Now ask yourself, who does this serve? <laughs> Follow the money. <laughs> Follow the money. Invasion biology is deeply corrupted by the herbicide and regulatory industries. Anti-invader publications that call plants pollution and chemicals the cure are supported by herbicide manufacturers. The exotic pest plant councils are herbicide industry front groups. Monsanto employee Nelroy Jackson was a founding board member of, the, of Cal Epsi and was on the National Invasive Species Advisory Board, Advisory Committee, his job at Monsanto, developing new markets for herbicides. Monsanto booth at a Cal Epsi meeting. Now how can we tolerate this corruption of environmentalism by industry? Monsanto brought us PCBs, Agent Orange, Roundup, bovine growth hormone, pl patented plants, genetically engineered crops and foods forced on farmers and consumers and harassment of family farms. So when Monsanto tells you they want to help nature by extending herbicide use into parks and wildlands, do you believe them? No. <laughs> okay, most control programs are futile and are expensive giveaways to pesticide manufacturers. The Murex fire ant spraying program wasted hundreds of millions of dollars with zero success and actually killed native ants, allowing the fire ant to spread. Over a billion dollars was wasted spraying DDT against the tiger mosquito with zero success and massive spraying against the gypsy moth only exterminated native butterflies. If your aim is to poison the land and water, wreck havoc in ecosystems and funnel billions into corporate coffers, Yes, these programs were successful. <laughs> uh, government agencies use invasives to increase funding and control. In the corporate state, regulations that are allegedly to protect the environment are actually designed to disadvantage small farms and grassroots efforts. New regulations, invasive regulations, prevent farmer-to-farmer -farmer exchange of seeds and crops and biological controls. This is the corporate theft of the biological commons. Invaders are called the second greatest cause of endangerment. This is untrue, only another minute? One minute. Okay. Uh, well, less than 6% of endangered species are even affected by invaders, and the claim of $137 billion in costs, also fiction. I used Pimentel's exact methods and came up with a figure of $11 trillion in benefit just from the, uh, the, the zebra mussel. Okay, really quickly, see the sidebar. This is from the peer-reviewed Journal of Ecological Restoration. Sidebar says, research under buckthorn shows that it, it, the, the soil under buckthorn may be nitrogen rich and devoid of soil microfauna. These are scans from the article, buckthorn was colonized faster and reached higher levels of microarthropods and all other types except cherry. Uh, Shannon diversity was comparable. But then the sidebar, devoid of mo soil microfauna. What is going on here? Am, am I the only person on the planet that read that paper? <laughs> okay, scientific misconduct includes false or misleading statements and omission of material facts. A fact is considered material if others would alter their conduct in reliance upon it. The repeated failures of invasion crisis promoters to disclose contradictory data are serious. I believe that, okay, billions have been spent on control projects that 
are unjustifiable and have been based on misleading statements and the omission of facts by scientists and bureaucrats. And I believe 